Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for another devotional. So one of my friends wrote in yesterday and said, hey Vince, does the leather journal cover fit over the scripture journals? And guess what? It does perfectly as if I planned it that way. So you can use these leather covers by purchasing one of those leather journals on the website and then slip it over your scripture journal for John. In fact, you'll be able to slip it over every scripture journal that we will use here for every book of the Bible. So such a cool purchase. Planned it that way. Of course I did. So <laughs> today we're going to be in John chapter 12. We're going to read verses 12 through 15, which is the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So these are this is some of the final week of Jesus's life. Listen to this text. It reads, The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. What a cool moment we have here, right? So when Jesus entered Jerusalem for the final time of his life, the crowd greeted him like a hero as he was. They praised and they paraded him right into the city as a rightful king. However, they were motivated to do this for all the wrong reasons. And Jesus was well aware of it. Nevertheless, Jesus allowed them to praise and parade him into the city. You see, here the people believed that Jesus was a king who was going to save them, maybe by military conquest or by maybe political positioning and maneuvering, or maybe by social justice. Because remember, they had witnessed over the last couple of years miracles and had assumed that he was now even going to perform greater ones right in the epicenter of the city of Jerusalem. Now, don't get me wrong. All right, Jesus does care about things like politics and government and social justice. But things like these, like politics, government, and social justice, don't save people. They are not the ultimate solution to the problem at hand, and Jesus knows this. And adjusting them doesn't even actually get anywhere close to addressing the core issue. What was needed when Jesus came to Jerusalem was a divine solution by a king who can actually address the root problem of what? Human sin and deliver salvation for all humanity. And that is a king worthy of praise and that we should praise for the right reasons. Now, one thing I appreciate about Jesus is his patience with us or with me. He accepts our praise even when we offer it for the wrong reasons. Because I need, think that he knows that sometimes as we continue to praise him, even if we do it with the incorrect motivation, that eventually we will mature to right understanding, delivering authentic and mature praise. At least that's what Christ has done in my life. Because when I reflect on my spiritual journey, there were many instances when I praised God with misguided intent. And I'm sure there were many times when God looked down on me, and kind of rolled his eyes at me. <laughs> like, why is he praising me for that reason? Not because he wanted me to offer misguided praise, but because when we come to him continually, worshiping him, we will eventually grow and mature in our praise and then praise him for the right reasons. This is because true praise eventually surpasses the need for natural request and natural things. And our expectations change over time as we worship God and honor the Savior for actually being our Savior and King who brings the best gift of all, salvation. So guys, do that today. Praise God, but praise Him for the right reasons alone. He is worthy of it. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you today. If it has, share it with someone else, and I'll see you right back here praising God for the right reasons tomorrow.